next phase of the ease of lockdown in Lagos State allows hotels and eateries to render eat-in services, of course, following some strict measures laid down by the state government now for over five months now. That sector has been seeing a lot of revenue loss and jobs also. Would this help to bring back the jobs or the revenue? Well, that's our story on this episode of Special Report. You're welcome. I'm Amy John Mekwa. Israel. Uh -huh. Mr. Ola Williams has been at home since March following restrictions to contain the spread of COVID-19. As a technician who's been in the restaurant and food services sector for over a decade, he's one of the hundreds of Nigerians who has felt the blow of the impact of the outbreak on the hospitality sector in Nigeria. The father of four, whose wife is a petty trader, says providing for his family has not been easy. So I've been home. And uh, you know, as it is, no salaries and then, and uh, because of that, hey, family man, you know, as, as uh, how it is going to be affecting somebody like that. We will be living by the grace of God. Presently, the house rent is due. I've not been able to pay that one. The feeding, my family and myself, is by the grace of God. Because when, when we are not paying salary, so there is no way we can have money. And you know, everything has to be purchased. There's an estimated 100 million cases like that of Mr. Williams globally. In Nigeria, the commercial capital, Lagos State, has not been missed in this economic setback. A consultant in the hospitality industry, Mr. Trevor Ward, shares from his records what the state may have lost. We reckon that the Lagos hotel industry, um, during the shutdown, it, 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 Lagos has started to ease now uh, with both... Um, uh, accommodation open and in-house restaurants open uh, as of the 14th of August. Um, when hotels were shut down, we, we calculated um, the, the, the Lagos hotel industry was losing about 7 billion naira a month in revenues and about 1 billion, revenue, uh, 1 billion naira lost in taxes to government. Uh, as a result, um, yeah, so uh, those are some numbers which uh, uh, are, are a snapshot, if you like. The tragedy more is the jobs, uh, is the jobs that have been lost. And we're talking tens of thousands of jobs in Lagos State alone uh, that probably will not come back in the short term. Uh, when a hotel is reopening at 10%, 20% occupancy, they're certainly not going to staff back up to uh, where they were in February at um, 60, 70, 80% occupancy. It's not going to happen. Restaurants will now be permitted to open for in-dining services from the 14th of August. The economic impact, as well as what the state government observes as a decline in the general positive cases of coronavirus, has led to the announcement that restaurants in the state can now resume in-dining services, but at 50% occupancy capacity. More so, a safety clearance is expected to be obtained by these restaurants from the Safety Commission before resuming in-dining services. More activities in the restaurants means more staff can be recalled. The president, restaurants and food services proprietors of Nigeria, Mrs. Kende Kamsen, is glad for this. I would tell you that in the industry generally, um, the return of workers to work has not been up to 70%. In some cases, it's as low as 50%, and in some cases, only about 40% of the workforce have been reabsorbed. So um, that is not very good, but you see, the point is that the 
um, business owners cannot add back their entire workforce with the lower level of turnovers that they are experiencing. So it has made everybody adjust and unfortunately the workforce themselves to, uh, you know, battered to an extent in this. It's not automatic that um, being able to receive your customers in the way you used to receive them before will automatically translate to the same volumes. It is not to be assumed, especially since that reception is also limited. We are limited to 50% of our seating capacity. So if our seating capacity can sit 100 people, for instance, you are allowed only 50. If it can sit only 20 people, you are allowed only 10. So depending on the structure of each operator's um, outlet, you, that is what we can do. And um, uh, we know that we just have to walk around what we have, but it's going to be a gradual restoration for all the operators in this sector. It's going to be gradual. There's nothing to assume that you're going to hit your sales levels as it was before COVID. In fact, I don't see that happening except gradually. And don't forget that the economy as a whole was what suffered in COVID. So you, we, can't, we must think outside the box, look at the, 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 the economy as a whole. It will take a, ta a while for the economy to heal. And that is what will affect people's disposable income. Not everybody that used to be able to afford, you know, quick service restauranting can come back. And even when they do, it will be spaced out to match their pockets. So, and that is why the restaurants themselves are quick to adjust, creating new meals, creating new combinations that make the food a bit more affordable. So there's been a lot of focus on 500 Naira meals. Um, even though what you buy is what you get, but there is a focus to make it more affordable and to make it yet still filling to the extent of its cost. And you'll be shocked to find out that a lot of businesses, a lot of our brands out there are considering lower pricing wow. in, in, the, in trying to survive and in trying to appeal to more pockets. The hotels are also beneficiaries of this next level of expanding of the social activities in the state. While they were allowed to sell their rooms from the 1st of July, their restaurants and other facilities were only open to in-house guests and social events could only accommodate 20 people. In the face of revenue loss, they still incur overhead costs over the period. Revenue loss is probably uh, 80 million a month, so that's for four months, it's about 300 million Naira that we've lost in revenue terms. During the lockdown period, we had staff members that we then brought and stayed in the hotel that enabled us to look after the property while it was here. From a maintenance point of view, the swimming pool we maintained, um, just maintaining the, the public areas to keep it clean, to go through the rooms on a weekly basis to make sure they get aired. The ACs were run once a week as well, just to make sure the AC plant doesn't come to a standstill. So we had staff here throughout the lockdown period, a small amount of staff to maintain the property. Yes, there are costs. We still had the electrical bills to pay. We still paid our salaries. Although it was reduced salaries, we still paid salaries through that, er that period as well. Mr. Page is not the only one counting losses from operating costs. Mr. Trevor Ward is in the same boat. He shares some ideas which may help the industry unfix some of their operating costs. We've discovered that um, our fixed costs, um, which are there regardless of our occupancy or, or table utilisation, 
our fixed costs are, well, they're too high, quite, quite frankly. And a lot of talk is being held now uh, about unfixing those fixed costs so that we can, you know, we can weather storms a lot better than we have been in the past. Um, frankly, by being able to drive, adjust our costs better uh, when we have downturns in industry, in, in, in demand, whether they be devastating, 98% down, nine, or 100% is down uh, in terms of demand um, for us and for the aviation sector have had a similar uh, downturn in demand. I mean, you hear of the aviation, you hear of airlines burning 40 40 million dollars a day in their fixed costs and you think oh my goodness um uh that, that really is a fixed cost space we'll never get down to zero costs when we have zero occupancy that that wouldn't uh, that wouldn't work i mean we still have to have security staff uh we still have to turn the generators over uh to to to, to you know to make sure they're okay run the air conditioning now and again to make sure it's okay. So we'll never get to back to zero. But, but having said that, there are hotels now in, in Lagos, in Abuja and probably elsewhere, which have been able to adjust their staff contracts um, to uh, actually outsource staff. So their staffing is, uh, is, is geared, their, their operational staffing is more geared to the number of rooms sold, for example, that they hire from a contractor, the number of room attendants that are required to service last night's bedrooms. Uh, so that that has become uh, that has moved some of that fixed cost towards towards variable. We'll never get there completely, but but it it we have had time to draw breath and think about it much much bigger. I think any hotel that says, no, 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 there's nothing we can do about our fixed costs is going to prove to be less competitive in the future than, it, 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 than others. And whilst the hospitality industry does a, is a, does a terrific job at, at creating, creating jobs, uh, a job of creating jobs, while we do a terrific uh, effort at that, we're not the only people that create that are out there to create jobs in a in a in a in an economy. So other industries have got to pull their weight, and government's got to pull its weight in terms of creating creating jobs as well. Um, if, if we are overstaffed, then we are um, we are less sustainable as an industry than than if we have we are right staffed. Um, so yes, there's always human tragedies there. Um, but the growth of the industry can pick up that slack as it goes along. At the moment, I'm sorry, it, it's pain for everybody from owners to, uh, to, to, to waiters, to line staff. Welcoming guests back is under strict safety protocols by the state government with the perspective that while economic activities are necessary, the numbers of positive COVID-19 cases are still being released every day. And we've been able to implement the protocols that ECHO have put into place to ensure that both our staff who have come back to look after the guests are safe with the COVID, post-COVID, and also the guests are safe coming into the hotel. So all up, we've got a whole lot of protocols that have been given to us, and we all know some of them, the face masks, the social distancing, um, sand, hand sanitizer. You'll see when you came in, they've asked you to, to, do, to sanitize your hand. So we've got a number of sanitizers all around the hotel. We've got a hand wash basin where you can wash your hands. Uh, face masks are mandatory. That's also a Lagos rule. Um, all of these protocols are in place. We've also, part of that is the cleaning protocol. So we've had to change our standard operating procedures to enhance our cleaning programs as to how we clean in both public areas, the rooms, the, all of our back of house areas, everything is to, including receiving of goods how we perceive goods and the cleaning of those goods, how we work with our suppliers. All of that, those protocols have been put into place from ECHO, who put us in, through this all-safe program that we've had to implement. The, registration process the hospitality sector would be operating under the watchful eyes of the Lagos Safety Commission, and the Director General tells us that verification is carried out on each outlet to ensure compliance. We've had over 5,000 people register. Um, some people have done duplicate registration, so we delete the duplicate 
um, but all in total roughly um, above 5,000. Um, it's absolutely free. There's no cost to it. Um, you go up to the platform. There are a number of things that are mandatory. Um, your business name, the location, the size of your facility, um, contact numbers. Um, and once you, once you go through that process, then the next stage is you would have your email verified. Once your email is verified, the next stage is um, basic safety measures that you have put in place, um, hygiene measures, and then there's a requirement for you to upload pictures of your facility. Once all this is done, there's a short video that we have put together that shows what life used to be and what we expect going forward um, in terms of practical demonstrations in terms of sizing. Um, a lot of people wonder what two meters is like. We've given them a video that helps them to understand what two meters is like. Um, a lot of people have come also to ask that what kind of table arrangements, what are kind of layout arrangements. There's also a video on, on that platform that shows the kind of expected arrangements. Um, once you're through with this, um, you then get a unique identifier number, which will start with an SC number, which is safety commission. Once you get this, within 7 to 14 days, we will contact you for either a physical or a virtual verification. Um, and once that is done, you get your provisional safety compliance certificate. Things With regards to the escalation and protocols, um, the guideline advised on numbers to contact um, if there is um, a suspicious um, COVID-19 patient or if any um, um, person indoor in, in, the, in the restaurant um, takes ill or falls ill and what to do, who to call and how to get them um, safely for medical assistance without them infecting themselves. Um, with regards to um, general management commitment, the guidelines were very specific as to whose responsibility was within the facility to ensure management commitment to some of these um, points that we have mentioned. Um, further to that, there was um, the requirement by the state government to ensure that all um, restaurant owners that are um, operating within the state, uh, there's a requirement for them to go on our platform, the register to open platform, um, which Mr. Governor had reiterated a number of times in his um, regular updates. Um, the platform, as we speak, um, has over 5,000 people. And um, within the restaurant, um, we've got about 800 people that have registered. And a number of them have completed their registrations. The Safety Commission has gone there to physically verify them. And those that we have not been able to physically verify, we have verified them virtually. And a lot of them already have their provisional safety compliance certificates. Special rearrangements. Um, ensuring the use of wash hand basins are available, ensuring the use of sanitizers, training for your staff as to how to deal with, um, with, with the customers, um, possibility of installing um, bar barriers like plexiglass to ensure that people are not interacting, um, isolating certain areas as containment spaces within your facilities, rearranging your um, special arrangement, your tables to ensure that when you have group bookings, people that come as families, there's a designated space for them. If you are walking as singles, um, ensuring that they don't sit close to each other. If you have a bar, um, safety protocols around the bar. So all these are the things that we've checked prior to, in, to issuing the safety, provisional safety client certificate. So the, the sector is you have the informal and you have the formal. A lot of the, the um, entities or the operators that have um, abided by our regulations um, are the formal ones. However, again, we have a system for the informal ones where we operate through a whistleblower system. So we have people out there that go out to check these um, informal entities to ensure that they come into the dragnet, that we register them. Um, but right now, um, we are still very much focused on capturing those that are within the formal bracket. <laughs> The restaurant and food services operators promise that valuable lessons have been learned from the pandemic and this will translate to better services for customers. It is in volatility, it is in crisis that you can, it, it may even be that crisis that makes you address things that you will normally not have addressed when there was no crisis. I want to tell you it's a two-edged sword that 
on one side was a disappointment, was volatile, was a crisis, and all that. And I want to say that on the other side, I think what most of our members say to themselves when we're on the table is, look, we have learned well. We are sharper. We have looked at things better. We are sharpening our delivery arm. We are changing our models in a way that is more friendly with the times. And many of them are not crying. They may not be at the levels they were before COVID, but they've been able to address inherent inefficiencies, inherent problems, inherent inadequacies that they had before. And I tell you this from a very, very knowledgeable standpoint. I speak to members all the time, and many of them keep saying, thank God for Koro, thank God for COVID, thank God for this, that at least we are now positioned to do better. People are ramping up their virtual, their telephone, and all the other related forms of service delivery. That is the number one, the key one. If Mohammed will not come to uh, the mountain, the mountain will go and meet Mohammed. And th that is one clear. And you can see all sorts of other adjustments. Like many of our operators are now operating car park services. For those who don't feel too safe, they don't want to come down from their cars. They don't want to interact with anybody. Some people have been shut up in their homes for long. And they want the meals. They want our meals from all our, you know, members. So car park services right in the car park. You sit in the comfort of your car. The food is ordered from there. It's delivered to you in the car. And right in front of you, it is sprayed and washed down with um, the bag is sprayed and everything. And I think that has helped a lot of operators outside delivering to their homes. While the restaurants are excited and eager to show off their new strategies, the hotels are asking for government intervention to allow their business flourish even better than before, considering that their markets blossoms when there's high travels. Uh, you're now talking about ease of doing business, you're talking about uh, visa regimes, you're talking about government policies, you're talking about aviation policies, making it easier uh, for people to get to, to Nigeria, people, uh, uh, airline uh, airfares being cheaper, all the things that we've been talking about for decades years, decades even, nothing new uh, from the current pandemic, but maybe we can speak in a louder voice now um, because of how hard, and I, I'm going to include aviation, how hard aviation and hospitality has been hit, um, because we are, we are probably uh, the hardest hit of all, um, of all sectors, and, and, and we are closely, closely linked, of course. Um, uh, hotels and uh, hotels are a function of travel. We hope to see a quick recovery of the hospitality sector and of course the whole economy as the medicals search for vaccine and cure for COVID-19. That's it on this episode of the program. I'm Ini John Mekwa.